So now we're going to move on to the first of our two chi-square tests that we're talking about today. And this is called the chi-square goodness of fit test. And as you'll see when we go through this test, this is a really, really similar test to our one sample t-test that we did a few weeks ago, except that whereas the one sample t-test was for a numeric variable, the chi-square goodness of fit test is for a categorical variable. So as I said before, the chi-square goodness of fit test is a appropriate for a single categorical variable, one variable at a time. And what this test is doing is seeing whether the proportion of observations across each of the categories of that single variable are different to some known or some expected proportions. And as I also said, it's just essentially the same kind of thing as the one sample t-test, but it's for a categorical variable, not a numeric variable. Okay, um, as you'll be very familiar with by now, each of our statistical tests has a, has a set of assumptions that go along with it. And these assumptions are just certain conditions or certain criteria that need to be met in order for the test to be an okay thing to do, in order for the test to be valid or appropriate. So we've got three assumptions for our chi-square test today. The first one is that our observations are independent. So if we've got 100 people, they're 100 separate people, nobody was sampled twice, nobody affected anybody else's scores. We also need to know that our data are categorical, either nominal or ordinal variables. And the expected frequencies for each of the categories in each of our variables is at least five. And that's gonna make more sense in a couple of slides this time when I actually go into the expected frequencies. So those are our three assumptions of our chi-square, both the good, goodness of fit chi-square test and also the chi-square test of independence that we'll get to in the next section. Okay, so here's our example. It's a very simplistic example. Um, I've just tried to sort of simplify things to make things a little bit easier for you to understand. So let's say that we've got 100 students and I ask those, each of those 100 students a particular question when they first enroll in psychology. So before they've ever done any psychology units, when they first enroll, I ask them, true or false, is psychology a science? So each student selects either true or false on that question. So I have one variable of data that I've collected, and that's a nominal variable, which is also a dichotomous or a binary variable, because there's only two outcomes for that variable. And I can represent my data for the data that I've collected in this table, just like the previous couple of slides. So you can see here in this hypothetical example that 55 students said true and 45 students said false. So out of those 100 students, 55% of them said true, 45% of them said false. And what I'm interested in here in terms of this statistical test is to see whether students perform significantly better than chance. And chance here would be about a 50-50 split. So if students did not perform better than chance, then we would expect about half of them to answer true, about half of them to answer false. Whereas I'm interested in seeing whether students perform significantly better than chance. So whether more of them answered true to this question than we would expect if it was just a 50-50 split. And what you can see here is that the answer to that question just descriptively is yes at this stage in that there are more people who said true than false. There are 55 people who said true versus 45 people who said false. But what we need the statistical test to tell us is whether given sampling variability, whether the proportion of people who answered true versus false is significantly different from chance in the population from which this sample was drawn. So if I'm interested in trying to get a sense of psychology students or kind of pre-psychology students understandings of whether psychology is a science in the population from which this sample was drawn. That's why I need this particular inferential statistical test to be able to see whether this breakdown of 55 versus 45 is significantly different from chance. Whether the likelihood is in the population from which the sample was drawn, is there strong enough evidence that more people said true as opposed to false for this particular question. So on to our chi-square test statistic. The actual formula for the chi-square test statistic is written out there. So you can see chi-square equals little squiggly line means the sum of. So this thing here, this symbol is called sigma. It means the sum of O minus E squared over E. And O equals the observed frequencies, so the actual frequencies that we get from our data. 
whereas E represents the expected frequencies. And again, I'll talk in a second about what those expected frequencies are. So our null hypothesis here is that the frequencies are as expected, i.e. there's no, really, no real difference between the observed and the expected frequencies. Whereas the alternate hypothesis is that the frequencies are not as expected. So there is a difference between the observed and the expected frequencies. Our degrees of freedom for this chi-square test are the number of categories we have minus one. It's the number of categories in our variable minus one. And conceptually, generally speaking, the more difference there is between the observed and the expected frequencies, the bigger our chi-square statistic will actually be, the bigger the chi-square test statistic, and therefore the greater chance that we will actually reject our null hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is saying that there's no difference between the observed and the expected frequencies. The bigger that difference actually is in our data, the bigger our chi-square test statistic becomes, and therefore the more likely it is that we actually reject that null hypothesis. Okay, so going back to our data here, you can see that we've got our 55 people who said true and 45 people who said false. And as I said before, our question here is whether students perform significantly better than chance, chance being a 50-50 split. So the expected counts that factor into this chi-square test statistic are essentially the proportion of data in each of our sample categories multiplied by the total sample size. And this is what we would expect under the null hypothesis, what we would expect if the null hypothesis is true. So here we expect 50% of our sample to fall into each of our categories, each of our two categories. And what that means is that we would expect 50 students to select true and 50 students to select false. So that's our table of observed frequencies there. We've got 55 true and 45 false our expected frequency would be a 50-50 split. 50 students say true, 50 students say false. And we can actually measure the discrepancy or the difference between the observed and the expected frequencies just by calculating observed minus expected. So for our true category, 55 minus 50 gives us five. For our false category, 45 minus 50 gives us negative five. So those expected frequencies, again, that's what we would expect to see under the null hypothesis, that if the null hypothesis here or the test proportions, the kind of test value that we're testing our data against here is a 50-50 split, then those are what the expected frequencies become, 50 people in each of our categories, 50% of our sample in each of the categories. So going back to our assumptions, we know that the observations are independent because that's met as a um, function of our sampling design. That if assuming that we um, assuming that we sampled 50 independent people, 50 separate people, um, then we know that that assumption is met. We know that our data are categorical, so our single variable here is a categorical variable. Um, it's a dichotomous variable, and we know that our expected frequencies for each of our categories are are at least five, i.e. the value of the expected frequencies in each of the categories is a value of five or more. Um, and we know that that is the case here because we calculated those expected frequencies on the previous slide and that those were 50 for each of our categories. So 50 is definitely bigger than five. So going back to our hypothesis testing procedure here, and remember that this is the same process that we follow regardless of what the statistical test is that we're doing. It's the same process, just with different kinds of tests. The first thing we're going to do is to calculate the chi-square test statistic by hand, which is going to follow the left-hand side um, of that uh, flow chart here. And then we're going to do for our next chi-square test, the second one we're going to do is using Stata to calculate it for us. And remember, just like always, you would either do it by hand or you'd do it using the computer program. You wouldn't do it both ways because you're doing the same thing twice. And the majority of the time, if you're actually analyzing data as a real world kind of data analysis type thing, you'd be using a computer program. You wouldn't be doing these things by hand. But the point of me doing it by hand to show you guys how to do it that way is just so that you have a better grasp on what the test is actually doing, what's actually happening when we plug numbers into Stata and it gives us some output. Okay, so our chi-square goodness of fit example, that's our formula there before. 
Um, that's the same as what was on the previous couple of slides ago. So if we put our numbers into this formula, then essentially what we need to do is for each of our two categories, for the true category and the false category, we need to plug in the observed frequencies and the expected frequencies into each of those formulas. So you can see on the first or the second row here, we've got the number of people in our true category. So the observed frequency was 55 minus the expected frequency of 50 squared divided by 50, which is our expected frequency. And then we do the same thing for people in the false category. So the, the observed frequency was 45 minus our expected frequency, which is 50 divided by the expected frequency, which was 50. That then gets us five squared over 50 plus negative five squared over 50, which then becomes 25 over 50 plus 25 over 50, which equals one. So our chi-square value, our chi-square test statistic here is one. That's our obtained chi-square. The degrees of freedom that we have for this particular example is the number of categories for our variable minus one. So here we've got two categories minus one gives us one degree of freedom. And the critical value for a chi-square statistic with one degree of freedom and an alpha level of 0.05, which remember means it's a 5% significance level. It's a 5% chance of wrongly rejecting the null hypothesis. Um, and I got that particular critical value from the critical value chi-square table that's out of your textbook, the top hat textbook. So looking up that particular um, chi-square value with one degree of freedom and an alpha of 0.05 gives us a critical chi-square of 3.84. So remember that now we want to compare our obtained chi-square with the critical chi-square. And what we want to find is that our obtained chi-square is bigger than the critical chi-square in order to reject the null hypothesis. So if the obtained chi-square is bigger than the critical chi-square, that allows us to reject the null hypothesis but that's not the case here. So here our obtained chi-square, which is one, is actually smaller than the critical chi-square of 3.84, and therefore we do not reject the null hypothesis. So what we've found here is that students do not perform significantly better than, than chance on this particular test. So on average, students did not know that psychology was a science before they started studying psychology. So that's the demonstration of the chi-square goodness of fit test. Remember that this is a single variable test and we're looking to see using this particular test whether the proportions of people or the numbers of people in each of the categories of a single variable are different to some expected frequency or some expected proportion or some known proportion. And it's just like the one sample t-test except for a categorical variable as opposed to a numeric variable.